is that? I don't know who it is. Me. Me. I don't know. Or a younger version. <laughs> a younger version. It's a it does look a little scary. It seems a little odd to have up for yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, a uh, <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Seven o'clock. Hey. hey. And there's someone that's gonna be taking notes on the um based on the recording so we don't need a note taker right okay thank you just for that that's right does everybody have that's the it. agenda i have to pull it up again okay. uh there are no members of the public present so no comment does anybody else have any comment any laura jean Somebody just, uh, I don't know who it is, is in the waiting room, so we'll see. Maybe this is for the public. Okay. okay. Hello. Are, are you here to attend the um, the Reading Board of Health meeting? It's the EP, EPEDU. I'm not connected to audio. Yeah. I'll send a message. They're muted. See if they respond. We need the name for the minutes. Right. Hello. Any, any response? Can you hear us? There's a, a participant here. EP. Your your screen show is showing as E P E D U. Um, or E Pedu, I don't know if you could um, unmute and give us your name so that we have your record for record for the minutes. That would be great. You can all also watch it live, right? <laughs> Edward Peduto. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ed, can you unmute yourself, please? Yes, the, I understand he's from the GM for the Burbank Ice Arena, but we, we'd love to be able to have you unmute so that we can. can Oh, somebody else now. Can you also watch it live on RCTV? I'm sorry, was that a yes or no? I didn't hear. I I don't know. I, I, I have never done that. I've always been in the meetings, so I don't know that. Maybe RCTV and that strange face could tell us. Um, does Mr. Peduto, Mr. Peduto have anything that he wants to ask the board or is he just observing? Oh, and while we're waiting, I see there's somebody else here. Um, Jerry Kramer. Jerry Kramer. You're muted, Jerry. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Welcome. Were you, did you come to the Board of Health meeting with a question or are you just wanting to observe? Yeah, yeah. just observe, participate. Um, of furniture right. and technology infrastructure and effectively implementing our learning platforms. Hello. Can you hear me now? Come on, yeah. oh, I like that. 
Yes, is, is that, is that Mr. Peduto? Yes. Hi. Hi. I think that you're, 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 okay. Yes, hi. Um, did you have a question that you wanted to raise with us or were you just well, joining? Yes, um, I first want to apologize for the complaint that you had to act on last week. <laughs> two devices, Ed, that might be why you're getting the feedback. Yeah, I'm trying to shut one off. Okay, that, that probably helps. Hello. Are you there, Ed? I think that's him on the iPhone and on a laptop, but maybe he's gone to turn off one. <sighs> um, well, while we're waiting, I'm just pulling up that um, guidance. Laura, do you know what? Um, do you know what, can you help us understand what Mr. Peduto is referring to? So last week there was a complaint that was um, given to Eleanor about um, no face covering at the ice skating arena. And we went down and we talked to Mr. Peduto about it, but he, um, he's come tonight to discuss the fact that, correct me if I'm wrong, the guidance has changed so that the masks only one and when you're on the bench or well, you know they would like masks at all times but the masks need to be worn on the bench at face off but not during play right Mr. Peduto when you're playing there's no um because I reviewed these actually today too with um Jenna because I wanted to make sure I had them right it was when you're playing you don't have to wear the mask but when you're doing a face off when you're on the bench or entering and exiting you have to wear them Okay. Can he hear me? I don't know. He's not um, responding right now. But okay, so I'm just trying to um, find that particular section of the guidance. I mean, I, I so Laura, you're saying four. you reviewed that and, and, and section four. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I don't even have it up on my computer, so I'm trying to find oh. that. <laughs> so that's saying, what he wanted to um talk to you guys about. Yeah, so you're saying that um, you, you reviewed the guidance. I mean, we're, we're following state guidance. If, um, if, yep. the, if the state guidance says that masks don't have to be worn, then I, I'm... That's fine, yeah. Right. right. I, so I'm not sure where the conflict is, is, is what I'm asking. I, I wish you could Pedro talk because I think he just wanted to. Yeah, I think he just wanted to. He's not, yeah, he's not here. I think he just wanted to talk oh. to you guys about it. So is he coming back? There he is. Yep. That you, Mr. Peduto? Oh. Hello. Ed, I think you want. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for rejoining us. Can you hear us? Maybe not. Can you can you hear us, Mr. Peduto? Oh, muted. Muted. I cannot hear you. Try. You can't hear us. You are mute. You are muted again, Mr. Peduto. Hello. 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 Are you there? Hi. I can hear you, but very, very softly. Okay. Huh. I have my volume way up. Right. I, I can. I can hear you. Okay, Paula. Can you hear me, Mr. Peduto? Yep. Okay. So, um, so Laura has explained to that that you that there's a you're, there's a, a discrepancy in the way Reading is is enforcing state guidance versus the way. Yes, um, I believe so. Okay. And and I'm and Laura, you're saying that the guidance states. The, the current guidance states that players should be masked for face-offs and on the bench, but they don't have to be masked for regular play. Is that what that that's what the guidance? That is, means? That is my understanding of section four. Okay, and 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 how is it? What's what what was your understanding of it, Mr. Peduto? Well, Mr. Mackman, the inspector, came out Monday in response to the board's uh, receipt of a complaint. And he read the bullet point. It is slightly uh, ambiguous. He read bullet point one as strictly involving mask wearing while in water sports, be it swimming, water polo, water aerobics, and other sports. Prior to that, it states masks are not required during high intensity aerobic or anaerobic activities with a comma before swimming. So that we it's being interpreted in every other ice rink as uh, ice hockey falling under that intense aerobic or anaerobic activity, thus not requiring a mask. There's further language in section four that masks are required when taking a face off. So you're in you're in agreement. I believe we are. But I, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, he's muted again. Oh. Oh, if um, I'm uh, understanding what he's asking, I think we're in agreement, but I'm not sure if that's the question. The question is can the players of ice hockey, be, except those taking a face off, be considered participating in an intense aerobic or anaerobic activity, thus not required to wear a mask? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But they need to. They need to have them on the bench as well. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. On the bench, the bench is a space six feet. We've got folding chairs beyond the length of the existing benches. Okay. And also with face-offs, they need to wear a mask. Yep. Yes. There were very few face-offs conducted here, actually. Okay. Most men's groups just take the puck out from behind the net, and youth hockey has gone to 100% no check, and I believe they're going to probably come up with a system of no face-offs, okay. taking it out from okay. behind your own net, for example, as you do in street hockey, if your goalie right. ties it up. That sounds reasonable. Right? So I think we're in agreement. Yes. Thank so, you. So Go ahead, Paula. No, I was just going to So it sounds like there is no issue at this point. Right. Agreed, Mr. Peduto? Agreed. No issue? Um, I agree if the, if the board agrees with that interpretation. Yes. yes. yes we That's do. what we're saying. We yes. Okay. Sounds good. 
Well, thank right. you very much for your time. And again, I apologize for the complaint you received last week. I wish I had gotten that on the spot. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for responding. And, and thanks for coming on to clarify about the guidance. All right. My apologies for the technological challenge. We no all have. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> yeah. for your talk. Have a good night. Thank you. you good night. Okay. Nice. Um, go ahead. No, I just noticed that uh, Karen Herrick has joined us. I don't Hi. know if she's. Hello. Hi, Karen. Hi, Hi. Karen. <clears throat> I heard this might be an exciting meeting, but I haven't looked at your agenda. Sure. Um, um, for our chair, right now, I'm. I was. I was vice, so I, that makes me acting chair for the time being. Um. We are not uh, in a. We do not have reorganization on the agenda. Uh, I think that there are some questions to to talk about in terms of the things that we have for um, sort of short term and and some roles that were identified for um, for the members by our our former chair Eleanor um, Shunkoff, and um, I know there were some. Uh, Laura and Jean, I think we're going to do some work identifying what was the work that an admin position might take on. Um, so those are, those I know are on. Um, before we get to that, though, I just wanted to update quickly about uh, some plan review. So I re received a number of emails this morning and um, with some different um, plans for sport and for uh, it looks like civic function permits and I worked out an agreement with Laura I'll be reviewing three of them this evening and then I will review three more on um, for Monday those are things that we as a board had agreed that they didn't require the, the full board to review that they would be addressed by the chair in collaboration with the agent and um, that we would move it through that way, unless there was something, you know, of, of notable concern or um, something very different that we that either wanted to bring to the board. So that's what I, I have agreed to do. So I owe Laura three plan reviews tonight. Um, once we finish with this, and I do want to talk about um, timing for these things going forward because. I, you know, I've said I can't be chair for the board uh, in part because I'm so busy at work and I, I can't turn things around on a dime. Um, I, I just don't have the capacity and I don't think um, any of us do. And, you know, once I finish talking, I'll see if others have thoughts. Um, so I wanted to talk about how we can set some standards for, you know, when things get passed and how we keep track of them. And make sure that we are all on the same page and, and, and helping each other out. You know, Laura and I had a great email exchange as I sorted out what I could do for these documents that look like they've been around for a little bit and helping her clear those. And I'm happy to do so, but um, I, I wanted to see if we could talk about how we might um, make some more efficient review processes going forward. You know, normally they come in and there's ample time because everybody's trying to get their paperwork in so early in case there are any changes or anything that they need to modify. I think just we got a little, mm -hmm. you know, Eleanor was very busy, obviously. She, she, she has a full-time job and all, but we got a little um, sidetracked with the other things like the reorganization and master plan and we didn't shift back to this and I was hoping but she was super busy by the end I was hoping they'd be done before before does she left us sense, does it make sense to maybe share that workload Carrie I mean uh, I'd be happy to review some of them um, does Thank that you. help yeah, I, I think that's certainly something we could talk about. I think, I mean, it, so I think there's some question about, so when they get received um, and then how they get sent to us. Oh, and Laura just sent me the arts festival. Thank you. I'll look at that You're later. Um, so, you know, for, for me, it would be great if 
I had um, not just the, well, the emails. Sorry. It, yeah. Yeah. As soon as I get them, you get them. Okay. Like I make sure you have them or Eleanor, the last round, she let me review them and then give them to her for review. So I held on to them for a couple of days and then gave them back to her. So it, it all depends on if you want me at first, she was like, no, I want to be the one to review them. So I forwarded them on and then she, immediately. And then she was like, no, I want you to review them and then I'll review them. So I held on to them for a couple of days, but okay. you guys know I'm, I'm on all night. So if you, if I get them, you get them. Okay take on that responsibility. Great. I mean, you know, getting like whatever we got today for them uh, that Laura passed Thanks. on just seemed, you know, it's, it seemed like a lot. And, you know, what I, what I was thinking was that, um, and this is sort of patent after my experience on the board of pharmacy, mm -hmm. um, which also gets complaints and, and so forth. Um, not complaints, but gets requests for different changes in policy and all sorts of other things that, um, you know, if, um, if when it came to the board, um, you know, at least a couple of days before the meeting, um, if in fact there was some context um, that maybe Laura could, you know, write up a paragraph like for instance, this one one was um, knuckleball, 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 knuckleball. But that, I mean, you know, I didn't know what that was. You know, I, um, I and know. exactly what they do, and even some of the sports. You know, you didn't know whether they were um, they were they were just practice scrimmage, actually playing. Um, and so, so one piece is sort of um, would be maybe. Laura engaging with um, the organization and mm -hmm. getting just a short blurb of what this is all about. Um, and that would be one piece. And then, you know, um, perhaps uh, reviewing their proposals with whatever the guideline is appropriate, whether it's the state guidelines or guidelines we've done or federal guidelines. Um, you know, and reviewing them and, um, you know, pointing out that um, this all seems to be, you know, within guidelines, um, or these are three things that they're not requesting or doing that we would want um, done. So if, so if, again, if I'm not sure who in the health department would do this, but it would probably be Laura, but, you know, would kind of um, go through the protocol and uh, point out where there are where there are any issues, and then make a recommendation. You know that uh, we approve it or we approve it with these revisions or what have you. I think if it was pre-processed like that, then it could actually come to the board because it wouldn't um, it wouldn't take that long to sign off on these. And so rather than the board chair having to go through, you know, six different protocols and interact and figure out what they're talking about and everything. This, you know, this sort of work would be done and then presented. What I've seen, again, in my other board experience is that, you know, these, you know, if, if it's pre-processed, you know, often it'll just take a couple minutes to ask any questions, see if there's mm -hmm. anything else approved, roll call, next, you know, um, as opposed to, you, you know, the chair spending, you know, two or three hours trying to figure out what's going on. So, I, you know, I, I think we could maybe work out some kind of um, process like that uh, for community, are they, are they called community permits or, I'm not sure what the technical term is, what are they asking? for a permit is that what it is yep. yeah well and it depends so for the sporting ones it would be for a field permit um okay. and for the so that the um the arts festival i think is a civic function permit okay is so how i understand it and i'm hoping gene and laura will correct us if it correct me if if i'm misspeaking please um, <laughs> So two different places. So actually happening in two different departments, one with recreation and one with um, 
the town manager's office, right? Um, and they're coming before us be, so that we can approve their, uh, to, to review their guide, COVID guidelines. Correct. So that's all we're doing. Correct. Right. Although, okay. presumably, there would be <laughs> other, other types of reasons we would want to approve something, but, uh, you know, I- yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So do you want to discuss each of the individual ones now, or is that going to, you want to table that for later? Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I think I, I like Rick very much what you're describing. I'd, I'd like to hear from staff how we can go about implementing that. Um, but I think for now, I, th I think these, because it does appear that they've, they've, there's been a little bit of time back and forth. I, I'd like to go ahead and review them and use the process that, that had been in place of chair conferring with um, Laura and um, and making you know making a decision, asking for asking for changes, whatever. And and what I would like to do is is have it. And I Jean sent this great spreadsheet that she's been tracking all the actions. I mean, I think that or maybe there already exists a spreadsheet. I want to be able to keep track, right? There are so many documents that fly through. Um, I want to make sure that we're keeping track of what we're approving. And, and if, if something comes up with it, we can go back and say, ah, yes, reviewed it on X day. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and yes, they, they said that they were going to have hand sanitizer available. You know, we did review that with them. I think that that is um, a, a useful and important piece of housekeeping to have in place. Um, agreed. So you're sort of describing like a, a cover sheet, essentially, Rick, that would. Right. I mean, I would be, I'd be happy to work with Laura to draft, you know, um, what I could envision would be maybe um, a cover sheet, you know, that mm -hmm. would have this information mm -hmm. and, um, and then maybe sort of a process flow of how it would um, come about. And, you know, I could bring it to a future meeting in the next couple of weeks and we can, um, we can review it. Um, I'd be happy to do that. Thank okay. you. That's, that's sounds, great. Yeah, Thank that you. sounds great. Sure. Um, we're, we're wanting to have, um, it's for functionality. It's not for creating, you know, creating extra hurdles. It's, it's no. to, to smooth the process and I think get everybody on the same page. Um, and you know, like I said, provide a little back, that, you know, ability to look back and know what we talked about. Right, in a structured way. Yep, that sounds great. Jean or Laura, do you have any comment? I guess not. Sounds good to me. Okay. okay. I'll be in touch, Laura. I, I was waiting for Jean. I didn't want to talk over her. So yeah, sounds good to me. Okay, great. Thanks for that suggestion, and and thanks, Paula, for the the uh, yeah how we how we share that how we share that load. I think we'll we have to figure out how to do some things. Um, um, so the other piece is, I know there was a roles list that Eleanor had shared. It was sort of the things that um, the, for, the chair has been doing to support the board and the department for the, the last 10 months or, or more. Um, and that was a pretty extensive list. And I think that's yeah. something to take into account as we talk about this, um, the short term needs. I'm not sure how that fits in our master plan exactly, but it was a very extensive list. It's, it's an, I, it's 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 more certainly than I, I'm I don't know quite how anybody was doing it. Um, <laughs> so um, do we we can talk about that as part of this convert as part of if we move to a master plan and talk about it as part of that conversation. Did anybody have anything else to say about the plan review that I just outlined before I move on? Nope. Okay, nope. hearing nothing, move on. I, I would I would actually sorry, can I just throw okay. one thing in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the extensive the extensive list that Eleanor was working on, it, you know, it was the middle obviously we're in the middle of a pandemic, so there's no oh, yeah. extra time for anything. Right. But um Ron O'Connor had suggested um that Ellen she had he had, she had reached out to um 
Ruth Clay and a few other departments and um, uh, I forgot his name now. I'm, ha I'm having a drawing a blank. Um, the gentleman that was the chair in the past and um, Sabara and everyone, and they had discussed that um, the board should actually take a class with and I don't know if I can take it, but I'd like to take it with you if I can. But um, with Cheryl Sabara. Yeah, the Mass Association Board of Health um, orientation class that they offer would, in November. Yeah. yeah. Would love to do that. Yeah. It's a great class. Um, uh, Laura, do because, you know when that's happening next? Oh, I, I, <laughs> I think, well, she she had said to Eleanor to, for, her, for Eleanor to call her. So I think it's on a one on one. I didn't realize it was an actual sit down class. Oh. Yeah, no, it, it's a conference um, that they hold oh. in two or three locations around the state every year. Um, I don't know what their plans will be for this year, um, since all of the associations are taking their court, their plans, their um, offerings, virtual conferences and mm -hmm. seminars and so forth are all are all going virtual. So I don't, I haven't seen anything about what MAHB is offering. Um, but yeah, I concur. I think that that foundation, that um, orientation is a is a useful class oh for, yeah it's a saturday um it's usually in november but it's a it's a saturday in november and they try and offer it in central locations or somewhat central locations okay so, um, i'd be all over that yeah um i will put that so is i'd be interested in it i don't know um I, I, nothing's coming to mind off the top of my head of why they wouldn't. Um, but well, I'll ask if I can, let question. me know. Yeah, I'll ask that question. Thanks. Sure. Um, yeah, I haven't been in, in a few years, but I did have occasion to go and, and present on some work that I was doing a, a while back and, and stayed for the whole conference. It's very good. Um, so conference plans and agents eligible. Okay. Um, all right. So moving on then to the master plan items. I, I did have a chance to talk with Jean a little bit about the agenda before. And, and so we have the order of um, review proposed roles and then paying class chart and timeline. And I propose to have Jean give us some information about the paying class chart and the timeline, because I feel like that is um, useful context for the, the rest of our conversations and, and better to know it up front before we start coming up with ideas and, and thoughts. So if, if others are okay with that, that, that's what I'd like to, I'd like to ask Jean if she could just talk to us about those two pieces. Please. I'd be happy to. Um, so, I, this conversation, I think, began maybe a year ago at this time, maybe more, um, when the discussion of the budget and how the budget process is is built, and how um, health, if health had some needs, you know, when would be the right time? And so this is the time because we are um, just about getting ready to in, enter into budget season. And um, so we start and September is really kind of the official start with the finance committee meetings. And we um, start that process. We go all fall, um, we present to the select board in December. And then the process starts in January with um, the finance committee and, um, and then digs deeper into March and then the town meeting is typically in April, although this year, I'm not sure it's gonna be that way. Um, but as part of that budget process, we've talked a little bit about um, kind of two things. There's the mechanics of the process. And so there's this chart, this classification chart that the jobs sit on. Um, that classification chart gets voted on by the select board usually in June. So usually we budget for what we think we're gonna need and then the official chart gets, we figure out where everything lines up in the chart. And then the chart, if we need to make requests and modifications, that goes to the select board in June so that everything is, is aligning at that point. 
So the the discussion that's happening now with the, with the Board of Health is really a very good one because the question of what does the health division need um, is probably, you know, it's, it's good that it's happening this early. And in my opinion, the board is wise to think about that in terms of what, what would you envision the need being. And then once you have that um, kind of envisioned and, and, and kind of um, uh, drafted out of what you think is needed, then that gets forwarded and we start working with that as part of the budget process. So what I typically do is I send an email out when I start working on the budget and ask the staff to forward it to all the boards so that I can hear from the boards if there's anything else that the boards feel they might need. So this is nice and early, which is great. Okay, good. So, so that's for FY22. Yes. Right, so beginning July 1. So that would be something, so, so whatever we kind of envision, um, the earliest that that could be in place wouldn't be until July of next year, um, and even later, practically speaking. So, so there are there are kind of three there are three things I think. So there's some short term needs based on the that are or immediate needs. Maybe not short not short term. They are they are short and long term, but they are quite immediate. Um, and then there's sort of the longer term question of, of what does the department need? And I think we're trying to gather information for both pieces. Um, and that's where this idea of a new needs assessment came up, um, which I think makes really good sense. Uh, what, and what I'm trying to figure out is how we reconcile these three things, these immediate needs, the needs assessment, and the what could the needs be for a um, budget process for town meeting for FY 2022? Your thoughts, Paula or Rick? So I, I, if I recall correctly, there was a needs assessment that was passed around to us not too long ago that was done via Winchester Hospital Outreach. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. But that was some years ago at this point. Right. So now we're thinking of doing our own individual needs assessment. Mm -hmm. there, there was a um, strategic plan, it's a little bit different, but there was a strategic plan done about five years ago. So it's about time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that was just for Reading. But you're oh, right. It was. Yeah. Okay. okay. I don't remember seeing that. I the member was through Winchester, Winchester Hospital. Yeah. Um, so is that something that could be forwarded to the board so that we can review that and get a sense of where we think we need to be going from there? Sure. Or what yep. remains, what remain, what still needs to be done, or you know, just to have something to bounce off of. Sure. Um does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, I'm 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 following my brow trying to figure out the mechanics of that. Um, um, I don't remember where I saw it, Jean. Is it or Laura? Maybe not. Is it on the website? Is that where I would have seen it? Oh well, I'll just go look there. Um, I'll double check it while you guys are talking, just to make sure it's there. Okay. Um. And who conducted that, Jean? Do you know? I do. It was um, here we go. Yes. Uh, oh, page could not be found. Okay. Well, don't go to the website. <laughs> I know there was a problem before, and I thought the problem got fixed, but um, I can't remember her name. 
but it was a consultant that the town hired mm -hmm. and the health director at the time um, got some funding. I, I believe it was through a grant and they did the plan. It was um, a fairly concise plan as a planner myself. I'm used to seeing much bigger plans, uh, yeah. but it, I think there's some good content and there was some good community outreach. Yeah. Okay. I know we well, said that, but it might have been before you came on the board. Um, then that brings up the other topic that was sent out earlier today, too, um, that um, the resource for public health resource. Yeah, the volunteer core. Yeah, yeah. the academic health department volunteer core. Yeah, I mean, that may be a solution for some of our immediate needs. I, I'm not sure how we reconcile the, um, I, there's the question of who would supervise that work and how use of the, the this academic health department volunteer corps would fit in with the town's policy of paying interns. Right. Um, this is a this is a a, a a team approach is how I understand this volunteer corps operates. So it's a little bit different than having a an intern assigned to the department for a semester or for a year. Um, Do you have thoughts on that, Jean? Do you how that might or might not work? Um. I think it's going to be tricky because um, the policy that the town has always followed is paid interns. Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, I think the challenge too is that we have to figure this out because because um, <laughs> that list, um, I, I, I mean, I don't know what, I can't speak for Paula and I don't know what our other associate members would would say, but I can speak for myself that that list that is um, that was shared today is beyond the capacity that I have um, to to take on. Um, those are really department administrative roles that uh, or functions, I should say, not roles. I would call them. Um, and I and I I don't know how we go about getting those things accomplished. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I racked my brain a little bit. I'm not sure what to do. So Paula, I don't know if you would review it, if you had any thoughts. I have not reviewed it yet. Yeah. Rick, did you have a chance to have a look? Did you have any thoughts? The, the list that, um, yeah, I, I did take a look at it. Um, you know, I think that, I, I think that it, like just, just as per our earlier discussion around, the chair reviewing all these COVID protocols, you know, for different organizations. I think what I agree that too much has been taken on by the chair. Um, and frankly, the fact that the committee has to has to meet, um, uh, you know, eight times a month, whereas most boards of health are meeting. Um, you know, once a month or maybe twice, um, mm -hmm. speaks to the fact that Thank you. we're, I think we're taking on um, too much of what should be, you know, um, management. And I think that's where this whole issue of sorting out the roles, having an administrative assistant and, and potentially a, a health director, additional resources to be able to uh, do this. I think that um, I couldn't agree more. I told it, Eleanor. It almost oh, feels like one needs to have, um, you know, we've we've defined we, we will have a health agent and public health nurse, and we have the board, the board chair. There are all these people, maybe a health uh, health director. It seems like we. we somehow and um, we need to be able to sort out the responsibilities 
um, because now there seems to be uh, an imbalance. May I make a suggestion that I've made to Eleanor a few times? Sure. Do you guys have a walk? Uh, sorry, I, and I, maybe I'm overstepping and I apologize, but do you watch other Board of Health meetings at, for other towns? I do not. I, I'm not I, 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 I have, yes. I, I suggested this to Eleanor because she was like, oh, she's like, you know, we need to you know, cut back and stop doing so much. And, and I was like, yeah, but you can't stop doing so much if you're, if you want to do everything. So if you want to know, and I'm not saying you can't know because everything is public record and I've answered numerous times, anything anyone's ever asked me, but if you want to review all the sports and you want to know the complaints and you want to review the food logs and you want to review the food inspections and if you want so oh. if you watch like uh, other board of health meetings, it'll be like, okay, the agent did this and everybody goes, oh, okay. Right. And we give a recap of what was done. But so what I would say, Laura, is I think we're, we're probably on the same page in that um, I think a lot of responsibilities have migrated for whatever reason, because I'm new, I don't know the history, but I board into the chair. And I think it is, um, and I, but I think what the board, I think what the board needs to figure out is how do we devolve a lot of these responsibilities back to the, you know, to you and, and Dan and, you know, the people in the health department. But at the same time, because the board is responsible ultimately for, um, you know, what's going on, I think what we ought to be seeing is, um, you know, there needs to be some transparency, which is kind of where we get into reporting and uh, just so that we're aware, so that if there are- um, Oh, I agree. There's information that comes back in numbers and, you know, I'll just use an example for food, you know, if, if a particular establishment has, you know, 10 citations or, um, you know, we should probably know about that in some way. And so, so I think it's a two way street. I think we need to devolve a lot of this back. I completely agree. Leave it up to the health agent and the health staff to do it. And I think on the other side of things, we need to get information. Um, it's, it's sort of like what I mentioned earlier around these uh, protocols for, for these sports and civic and um, field permits, uh, we don't, we, we need it just kind of reviewed, synthesized and presented. And then it should just be, you know, looks good. Um, if in fact we decide we wanna, you know, see those protocols at all, I, you know, that, that's another question. But it's, 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 it has to be, um, I think a two way street. Yep. Can I ask a question, Laura? Laura? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do you have a template that you use for your reports? I have the template that the health agent before me was using, but that's exactly the one I copied, which I thought was funny because Eleanor goes, oh, we should use Bob Gracie's. And I'm like, oh, that's who made mine. <laughs> ah, uh, would you mind sharing it? I just would like to review that's it. it. Exactly the one I sent you last last month. Actually, oh, last month okay. was far, far, far more detailed. The one that um, okay. I got originally was changed. Well, um, the one I had originally has, um, I've never actually given the same report, I think, two months in a row because it's, it's always um, changed. The board changed it every month. So I, I, I can give you the original one, but the one I gave you last month was far, far, far more detailed because okay. it sounded like, based on our conversations, I didn't, I wasn't sure if you guys, well, Eleanor was like, we don't know what you do. So I added everything, but yeah. normally it's just um, 20 food inspections were done, three re-inspections were done, and just, it's very bullet point, yeah. one page included everything, and that was it, but then... Um, there's a lot of different requests and we've had a very 
the board has changed numerous, numerous times. I know. Any so time I've never actually been able to give the same report two months in a row in the three and a half years. And I will give whatever you want, but the template that I did originally that we got from another town mm -hmm. is a lot less than going over every single complaint and inspection and reinspection and phone call and plan and everything. It's the highlights. Okay. So and that's why Cheryl Sabara wanted to um to talk to Eleanor. Okay. But I'll give you guys whatever you want. So so the the I just want to make sure I'm understanding Laura. The document The more you that, do, the more you have to read. The and I don't mind reading. Um, but but so the document that you sent after your report last week that 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 bulleted list that's the one you're referring to that um, Mr. B that Bob Bracy was that that's, that's the a template? very that's a very expanded version of it yes okay um, and then you said so you there can, was any any town you can look at any really any town. Um, I can send you the one that I got originally that the person that trained me gave me. If I Great. still even have it, because it's changed. If I still even have it, because it's changed so many times. Yeah, I mean, I understand that it's changed. I think that what we're trying, what we need to get to, is a place of being able to have what you know. Rick talks about sort of that transparency, so that the board can do its oversight function and feel like there is a. a a clarity of kind of what's been happening. That doesn't mean tell me every, to me, that doesn't mean tell me every phone call that you've had. It means there are, there were 20 COVID complaints and there were, you know, three inspection complaints or, or something like that. Um, and then just as Rick said, then we can have further conversation. You know, maybe there's a question about, oh, really? You know, there were three, how'd they resolve? You know, is this something are they knew? You know, whatever. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm theorizing here. Um, but I, but I. Yeah, do I'm think an open book. Whatever you guys want. If I can find an old one, I, I can pull up an old board of health meeting from three years ago and copy and send one out. I just gotta find one. Okay. Um. So yeah, I mean, a, a, a report template. But so what I'm not sure though, is um, how much of these, those, the, the things that are on this list, I don't know if you if you have this list or not, Laura. I do not. Um, um, because this is, um, these, these Can somebody things send are, it to me? Um, these things are, are, are different, right? So it's, um, re, you know, reviewing the, um, reviewing the public health guidance, drafting and implementing orders. So the face mask order, for example, um, searching out information to ensure correct interpretation and application of the guidance. So calling the governor's office, calling DPH, other town websites. I mean, these are all, it's too long to read. Um, let's see if I can you mind sending so, it over? Yep, just trying to get there. Um, so I, I'm just not, because it's very clear to me that you and Dan are quite busy. So I'm trying to reconcile that with how do these other things get accomplished? Um, and I don't think it's as simple as saying, well, we're not going to do them anymore. I, I want to make sure that we understand how they're getting accomplished and what the reporting would be. I don't know why I can't go. There we go. <coughs> I'm fine. I'm just finding it now, Laura. Hang on. Um, no worries. No worries. Even later is fine. Just I can look it over. Do do other board members have <clears throat> any thoughts or questions about that conversation? No, I think I. I think uh, it would be helpful to me to see the template, so I know. You know, so I can get a sense of what happens with the report. Yep. You know how it gets filled in, and and Agreed. where I feel like we need clarification or 
Um, and you're faster you, than me. Do you, do you have one? No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, that would be okay. So, so our action items are, um, Laura is going to provide a template report to the board. Um, and something else. Sorry, yeah, I'm, so I'm going to sit here and, and kind of argue with my computer if I try and share this with you now, Laura. So I'm, I'm going to have to wait. Um, yes, I want to exit the wizard. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, now I've gotten all sorts of messages. Okay. Um, yeah, so they, I mean, it seems like there's a degree of interactivity that's been happening that we need to figure out how we make how we make sure that information gets shared, um, and and how it's going to happen. I I'm I'm thinking that the short-term solution of accessing that volunteer core that's available because of COVID, and I think a lot of this on the all of these functions on the on the list are due to COVID. Um, that to me is an option I would like to explore. Um, I, I know the people who per personally and professionally know the people who created the volunteer corps. I know some of the different volunteer corps, um, coordinators, uh, I think highly of the, the folks that have done that. And I think they may be a short term, um, solution. So I guess I'd like to find out, um, what the next step would be to find out from the town what the what how to resolve any barrier there may be to accessing that volunteer resource for some discrete tasks is that we, <laughs> we don't do um unpaid volunteers even under these extenuating circumstances it's not my rule it comes out of hr so that's where the, the challenge is. Now, as you know, there's been money set aside for COVID, $30,000. Uh, plus we have $15,000 in grants that can be used for resources. So there's money. So my, so there's money. I have two concerns about that. Um, one is then if we, pay for somebody then somebody's got to supervise them and we're talking about a list already that's that's that people can't do so i'm not sure how we add that in um and my second is i'm uh, uh, i'm not sure i know there was some talk about maybe there are there's a health director that might have a few extra hours that they'd be willing to um take on some tasks and if there's a way to explore that, I'm certainly I'd be interested in that. I, I am fairly skeptical of how many directors there are out there who have extra time. Um, the folks Did that we I, have one in mind? No, I don't. I don't be, know if there's any because, other. The, Jean? No. Um, I did send out a list of everyone that is in our emergency preparedness group. I don't know if everybody got that right last week. I have to go back and look at it. Yeah. I just don't know. Um, I mean, I, I don't know of any community, community that um, is, um, it, I don't know the individuals. Perhaps there's another individual who would be, um, who who has some extra time, but um, I think most departments are quite busy, um, kind of like when we talked about staffing a couple of weeks ago. Um, departments are looking for additional resources. I don't know folks looking, looking, for, <laughs> looking for more work. Um, Carrie, this is Karen. Yeah. I, can I chime in for a second? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, or Acting Chair. 
Um, so, Jean, I, I have kind of heard this before that we have a policy in town not favorable to using volunteers. Um, I'm just wondering if we could do something and you're heading out on vacation and that's totally fine. So I'm not looking to give you what to do, but is there, is there somebody else I could sort of follow up or do you have any thoughts on, you know, just taking, exploring that a little further? We've never had a pandemic before. Maybe it's time to revisit longstanding policies. This is what I was trying to uh, point out, Karen. Thank you. Extenuating circumstances. Yeah. yeah. I think it's it's not a matter of not using volunteers. I mean, we have a lot of volunteers, obviously, uh, in other yeah. areas, Council on Aging, uh, Senior Center, and all that. We do make use of volunteers. The question here is, a, um, a volunteer core coming in and doing work like what you're describing is where the where the sticking point is mm -hmm. and this is this is work I think what the board is saying is this is work that would be um, staff level it's been handled by the board and it looks like this list is, is point, really wants to be on a staff level and so if yep. we're talking about having staff, that's where it gets tricky. So, and I, and I guess I'll, I'll, I'll add in sort of echoing the, we've never had a pandemic before and, and note that this volunteer course being used by multiple communities around the state to address staff work because the volume is so high that there is a, um, the, it's 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 not surmountable. So, I don't know. I don't have a list of the communities. Uh, that's certainly something we could talk about. So, um, I just I agree. I understand that there's a, a issue, but this is um, a work volume beyond the norm that makes me wonder if there's a way to explore consideration. Can I, can I just get um, clarification? The, the piece of work we're talking about is, um, is it <clears throat> starting with the role of the chair, but you know, is it to sort out um, different responsibilities of all the different staff types we've talked about? Is that what we're asking? What, what exactly is the the project, if we were to be able to get a volunteer or if the staff were able to do it, are we talking about um, defining the responsibilities of, of different staff, including the board? What, what are we? So, sorry, we're talking on the short term solution, for example. So, I'm just pulling off this list um, use sports protocols and maybe provide a summary sheet or a checklist of them um, to ease the review process by staff. Um, I'm looking to see what else on that. I know that there's some data analysis that uh, there's a sheet that describes some of the work that they have been doing. Let's see if I can I'm looking. I'm seeing the best pre some the best practices for reopening. Right. right. Identif right. Identifying best practices for reopening. So maybe that's phone calls or or reviewing the uh, the MAHB and MH MHOA and MEHA websites for. There are a lot of great practices out there that health departments have chosen to share um, to um, so it might be that might be another kind of function. Um, so these would be discrete um, discrete review. But I don't think the VTC can take on all of the things that the um, that the the chair has that, that appear on this list. Um, and just see if we could pick off pieces. Um, so, um, right, because I mean, one of the things on this list is assessing health department staffing needs is necessary. That is not something that the VTC would do. That I think is, um, that's a different issue. So right. maybe we should move to that. And I mean, it sounds it sounds like the, the, the question we're not going to be able to, to answer. We need to we need to know 
if there's an opportunity for consideration for use of the, the volunteer form. Um, I'm happy to make a phone call and have, have that conversation with someone uh, if, if that's appropriate for me as the chair or I, I think I heard um, Karen offer to do that as well. I, I don't know what the best way to, thanks for the best way to proceed is. <clears throat> I see, um, you know, things like maintaining electronic database of food inspection data and, and some of those other things you mentioned. I'm just thinking they sort of, so this volunteer pool, are these college students? Are these they people are that largely, have been in the industry? They're largely graduates. I'm, I want to see, so I have a shared, I think. Um, I found a report if anybody wants to check their email while you're doing this. I saw that. Thank you, Laura. Um, there was another, there was a, oh, it's the document that Laura um, sent, said Eleanor asked me to share this with the board. Maybe it's right. a PDF. Um, stop sharing and then I will share that document so you can see what this volunteer pool was. So, yes. This, sorry, this list of chair responsibilities covers both COVID and non-COVID. And I think the, the short-term, one short-term solution is a question of can we use the volunteer core for COVID-related questions? Um, <laughs> why is that document not showing up? I have... If you could see how many windows I have open. There it is. Here it is. Okay. So now I'm going to share. Sorry, thanks for bearing with me. Share. Forty. Share. It's not letting me share. Uh, oh, yeah, wrong one. No, not that one. Um, this is the one I want here. And now I can share. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for listening to me talk to myself. Um, can everybody see that? Coming. Oh. There. Yep. Okay. So this is a list of how they have been used by um, different communities. Um, see translation is not something that's on our list. Community outreach. Um, data analysis and presentations. So maybe there's data, um, the data we gathered, um, policies and protocols. So developing policies, so doctoral student. Uh, they're, so they're, it's a team and then they have their own, in, their own, uh, their structure has each team assigned to a doctoral student who has some experience and can provide some guidance because they recognize that um, the reason that people have a need for this is because they don't have time to, <laughs> you know, supervise, never mind do the additional work. So um, there is sort of a safeguard there with that. Um, they're very careful about getting clear requests. Um, yeah, so. So I, Jean, the, I guess the question remains, who, do, who would we speak to about this? I, I think in the past, it's been through the chair. And if anything has to do with hiring, um, that, would, that would have to come through town hall, whether you want to send it to HR or um, the town manager. I mean, you can give it to me and I can forward it however you want to do it. Um, have you guys discussed this with your um, select board liaison at all? Probably not. Nope. 
this is the first time I mean, we've yeah. spoken briefly about this, but well, I'm really glad to hear about the supervisory capacity because I under I understand that. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, help with the ballots that the election staff got this week, they were doing the supervising. So I, I get that. So that's actually really good to hear. And the fact that they're graduate students is really good to hear too. And mm -hmm. Um, you know, we don't have to throw everything at them. We can start slowly and see how it goes. And if, you know, as we are looking at these, these tasks, I just, I would like to see if there's a way. So, um, so through the chair, so, so I'm happy to, to have the conversation. I just need to know who to have it with. And I would start with this sheet. Um, should I just talk to my select board chair? Or should I talk to so the town manager is the hiring authority. So it probably makes sense if I don't know if, if you have any time next week. I don't you know, it's kind of a busy week for vacations, but um, you could either email it to the town manager and okay. say something that the um, board of health is interested in pursuing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Jean. Yeah, that's probably the best way to start because he's the hiring authority. Got it. Sounds good. And you might, um, maybe, why don't you reach out to your liaison as well okay. and, and tell her you have this need and you think this might be a solution and just keep her in the loop. That's what I recommend. Okay, thank you. And if I can do anything, you let me know. Um, thank you, Karen. That's like a decent plan. Yeah, I mean, like it doesn't take care of all of the pieces, but... Um, no. Nope. But it, it seems like we're going to need multiple solutions. Um, okay. Um, I just want to make sure I understand it. Do those um, items that you just had up, do those yeah. align with where the needs are? Because that's obviously the right. goal. Right. So there are elements that align with the needs, but the needs are larger than the um than just that. That's what I'm saying. I think we're going to need multiple solutions. Um, <sighs> um, okay. So, sorry, I should turn a light on so I can see the agenda. Um, so, um, so we've talked about internships and I will follow up about the paid unpaid piece as a resource for some COVID related tasks. Um, we talked briefly about this alternative model such as regional sharing. Um, I don't, um, I don't know quite how to proceed with that. Um, I guess I'm not, was that suggest, that regional sharing suggestion, um, that sounds like something, Laura, you had um, had some conversations about? No, I just um, sent you a list of the people that were in our emergency preparedness. That way we didn't have to um, join a whole new group or try to, um, because the state sets that. So if you, at least if we stick with the people that we're already partnered with, it might help. But you're more than welcome to go with any other town. So, I know um, Ruth Clay runs Melrose, Wakefield, Stoner, Malden. What, what I don't know does, if you'd want to reach out to her. What, what does that emergency preparedness group do? 3B, I think it was. What, mm -hmm. what how do you collaborate? I'm not, just, can you educate me in two minutes or one minute? Well, in case there's ever like something like COVID, we all work together to find, we get resources, we can order supplies through there. They have, um, it's just everything that works together. So we share, if somebody has an issue in one town, we can go over and help. It, so, it is emergency preparedness. So exactly like ordering masks in bulk or mass distributions or when there was a fire in handover with, with the, the explosions. Okay. Is, is, um, does the state organize those preparedness yes. groups? The state does? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
And so you have a contact at the state at the state level who organizes these, there was like six or eight towns that work, work together. Correct. So if we were to share resources, the most logical thing would be that that same group because they were already working together. And I can't find the list, but I know I sent it out last week. It was, um, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. And I don't know, how would we go about um, seeing if anyone was interested in sharing services? I mean, of course we need to know what services we were sharing, but how, how would we go about doing that? You'd have to ask Jean, I don't know. We, we used to have a regional um, arrangement and that was through a contract. Yep. We shared a health director with Melrose and Wakefield. So it was three communities. That was with Ruth Clay, right? Ruth Clay, yes. Yeah. That, that, that's happened, a, 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 there's been a couple different versions of that, I think. Um, is that right? Um, yeah, the, the, the three communities were together and then we decided that that really wasn't working for Reading. So we went with the, the different model, having our own. And then Ruth Clay still has the two Melrose and Wakefield. So that regional group is still there. It's just two now instead of three. So and if I'm for that whole section. Yeah, that's a different region, right? Right. Yeah. So she runs Melrose, Wakefield, Malden, Stoneham. And then she is the health agent for Melrose and Wakefield. Okay. So I, I, I how how would we go about if if that was something so alternative models such as regional sharing, how would we go about accomplishing that? Well, you'd have to find another community that had an interest and then you um, figure out the best way to staff a regional model. If, if you're talking about going to a regional model, you have to then come up with a contract a scope, who's going to do what, um, and a lot of those details have to be worked out. And then the budget would be an expense. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't. It wouldn't show up as a salary. It would show up as an expense for that. It's basically a contract for services. Mm -hmm. But in Massachusetts, an interlocal agreement is a lot more straightforward than any other kind of contract. Um, Seems like that's a solution, um, but we would first have to figure out in our own house what what is it that we, you know, wh where is it that we we really need to collaborate somewhere else because that would be more efficient or, you know, more effective. Um, so it seems like you have to go through a process of sorting out you know, our strengths and weaknesses or, or where we have resources or how each resource is used and then say, you know what, um, these are the three areas that we probably should collaborate and then, then go find. It seems like we need to do some homework. Before. We're back to the needs assessment, it I seems agree. to me. Yep. So then uh, I, uh, on this on the agenda, there are three consultants listed there, yep. or several consultants anyway. Yep. So maybe that's where we need to be looking. And was am I correct? Wasn't one of these people used before for Reading? I don't know if you have the answer, Jean, maybe, or Laura. Um, we've 
worked a lot with MAPC. We're actually working on uh, green communities with them. So, um, but I know, you know, as, as it's noted here, it's more of a land use planning organization. I have spoken uh -huh. with Gary Kephard, who is the public health director for the MAPC. And he's supposed to be sending me some examples of this kind of similar work in other communities. I think that's always a really good starting point. You can see what kind of a, um, what kind of a product you end up with at these communities. I, I think agree. it's very helpful to see that. It, would it be possible to ask, have the same inquiry to Jon Snow and to, to JSI and to HRIA, Health Resources in Action? Sure. Yeah. I, I don't know if you want me to do it or Laura, because I'm going to be on vacation, so. Right. Um, yeah, Laura, is that something that you could, could you do an email to the, there are two different organizations. Um, could you reach out to, to these so it's one, two, three, four, these other four and ask if they um, could provide a sample product you know, or of what they might do for a, a needs assessment? Sure. Great. Perfect. Perfect. You muted, Rick. Is that a, just to be clear, is that a needs assessment of the community health issues, or is that a needs assessment of, um, you know, our current structure and the board doing too much, or and we wanting to revise, you know, role responsibilities? Wh which of those two things are we at? Would we be asking for? Because they're obviously very, very different. I agree. It's a great question. I had the same too. I believe I'm talking. I believe which I'm, I'm talking about the the department, the okay. di or the division, or how that's that's what I'm interested in. Right. I would I would agree that that should that should be the focus of maybe a a kind of review of how we're doing things, what the yep. board does, what you know, what kind of transparency we have, and 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 help help us figure out where where to go on that because until we i feel like until we feel like we got all the blocking and tackling to you know down it's kind of hard to think about the broader community and and how we can do that so uh, so, so to be clear i'm asking them for a needs assessment of a health division right yes they can look at our current yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. how we do things, how, what the board does, what the chair, what the agents are, you know, just to kind of look at that and say, based on, you know, other departments, I mean, it is something some, anyone could do, but getting the consultant just is an easier way of getting the information, yeah. what, what they yeah. recommend. And more timely, yeah. And well, and I think too that by engaging a public health consultant, we would get some, you know, because some of that has to take into account the community demographics, the numbers of restaurants that we have, the not the septic needs, the um, the variety of inspections, the age age groups, and the the existing services in the town that might take care of other aspects. So I think that that's where the public health knowledge, the consulting knowledge, would be valuable. Um, as opposed to it just sort of being a workflow assessment, you know, to your point, Rick, I think that's the value. So yes, a a a a, a needs assessment for the health for a health division for this community. Okay. Are you clear on that, Laura? You does that make sense to you? Yeah, I'm going to ask them for a sample of a needs assessment for a health division. They're not going to tailor it to our community because then that would be actually just tiring them. Right. So we're going to we want a sample of what it looks like and how they do it just to see if that's what we're looking for. Because we're interested in, yes, the, what, the product we're interested in is something that would tailor it to our community. Yep. Okay. Well, that's good. So that moves us forward a little bit. Um, what I 
I don't want to lose sight of the piece, the keeping track of our, our budget piece of if we're going to hold open anything um, so that it appears it can be considered by town meeting. Um, Jean, was there a, a timeline issue that for that, or are we not in at risk for timing with town meeting yet? Um, I, I guess it depends what you're looking to do. Um, the warrant for town meeting closes uh, September 8th. So that's hmm. a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, are you talking about going to town meeting with some sort of I don't, I'm not really sure what, what right. you want. Right. So and asked for town and I asked to town meeting if we said that we wanted if if we this is that the, the needs assessment and the the needs assessment is kind of out of wanting to keep it in sync with it, any requests that we might need to make to town meeting for additional positions or, or funding for positions. Would that happen for November? Would that need to happen for November town meeting? Because that can't. I mean, we can't pull that off. If the warrant closes on the eighth, we're we're done. <laughs> um, so we'd be looking to put that on the on the regular town meeting. You're talking about the. You, are you trying to figure out how to fund a study? No. Like, is that what you're asking? No, about the the positions. The making sure that positions are on the warrant so that, or or space for positions is on the warrant before okay. we have any information about what it would be. Yeah, I think I think I think you want to do it the other way. I think you want to right. define what your needs are. Yeah. And figure and build that into a budget. Yes. And at the end in June, we can figure out how to make it work on the chart. But don't we have, wasn't there an issue of the positions on the chart not necessarily matching up with what we um, thought we needed? So that's for right now. But if you're talking about for the next fiscal year, yep. we build the budget first and then we adjust that chart and go to the select board now to we'll approve it. Okay. And I've thrown in town meeting as an extra complicating factor that isn't an issue. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, town meeting just votes the money. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And once the money's there, then then it, it flows you. through. Yeah. It flows okay. through. It usually isn't a problem. Okay. If you wanted to hire a health director by November 1st, that's where we have a problem because it doesn't, we don't have it on that chart. Okay. But planning for it and funding it and then, yeah. you know, going Got through the, yeah. that process. Yeah, we, we, we need to know what we're, we need to know what we need, right? Yeah, I mean, we need to talk to, to, talk to, to staff, as we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, have conversations with staff, have conversations with the board. What are the tasks? What's the best way to sort of distribute that work? So, okay, good. It um, might be helpful if Laura is asking around for the scope to find out what the cost was too. Yep. Yes. Good idea. Because, um, as I mentioned, the um, health revolving fund is a resource to the board. Mm -hmm. Jean, that, yeah. Could, could we? Can we use that? to do an emergency hire for a pandemic? Well, the health, the health revolving fund is for expenses. Oh, you know what I was thinking? I was thinking of the hospital fund. Oh, the hospital trust. Yeah. We're never gonna build a hospital. And and yeah, this is, I hear what you're oh. saying. The realities of <clears throat> budgeting, like you need something now, but you need to budget and it might not happen till next year. Right. Um, right. What's the hospital trust? That's a fund that is on aging. Mm -hmm. 
And do you know how much is in there? And, um, but it's for, for hospitals? No, Sorry. it has a, it has a very specific use. Okay. More related to, um, like we, we fund a lot of the uh, rides for senior citizens out of there, the medical transportation, that kind of thing. Yep. yep. It's a, I, think, I think it was originally set up for a hospital and yeah. so it's been growing. So I, I did hear about this funding some of the seniors activities, which is wonderful because they're yeah. health related and writing specific, which are some of the parameters. So yep. kind of interesting to ask the question you know, could we use it to help us get through a pandemic? Right. So, and then the other part, so there's revolving fund, there's $30,000 set aside of, of salary money. Um, so revolving fund, it would be expense money for a contract. $30,000 for salary dollars if that was set aside for the, um, uh, in case we needed additional public health nursing support. Um, Jean, was there anything about the public health nursing, that posting, do we have an update on that? Well, I know at the, the last meeting, uh, there was some discussion about taking it down. The, and that no, no, one hit, no, interest. no one's applied for it, correct? Well, I don't know. I think the discussion was maybe we don't wanna hire more nursing and use the money for something else. So that was that was my memory of what we had discussed. Uh, but postings up there, and um, and we have not received any applicants. Right. August is notoriously bad for hiring. And um, do we remember when that was posted? It was. It's been up for a little bit. Yeah, I want to say sometime in either June or July. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. We had talked about leaving the posting up, but not not hiring anybody. And, yep. um, but if there was interest, we would obviously need to make a make a decision. Right. Okay. I'm just keeping track of what pots of money there are. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a short list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. How would we find out how much is in that hospital fund? I'm going to pull up something off the website just to give you a peek at what, what the hospital fund is. So this is on the town website. And it's the um, Elder and Human Services, Reading yep. Response Program, Medical Transportation, Lifeline, uh, and Carrie Valley, who's our senior case manager, is the contact on this. Last night, and this keeps happening a lot, is that a cat or a fox? Yeah, right there. Sorry, Laura? Watch the tape last night. We can hear you. <laughs> we can, so, sorry, Laura? Sorry, I was asking my husband a question. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> so I, that's, if anybody's interested, you can kind of go to the website and get a little bit more about the hospital trust, if that's helpful. Trust, that's helpful. Okay. Last number I heard was upwards of a million dollars. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. you know, this, a long time. This, this, this sounds familiar. I think it was, it was a, a, a dollars placed in trust with the very specific set of uses that that were eligible to be funded um that kind of make the the um limit the ability to access the dollars is that yeah accurate? so whoever was clever enough to figure out how to fund some of our needs for the senior population we need to figure out how that might help us in a pandemic because right. it's called the hospital trust fund <laughs> right right interesting right. interesting Okay, thanks for that tidbit. Okay, so thanks, Karen. Yes, thank you. Um, so 
we are moving forward on the needs assessment. Um, Laura will get back to us, let us know what responses she hears back. Um, I'll follow up with Bob next week about the option or the availability of accessing the volunteer core for some portions of it, just to follow that question. Um, as far as regional sharing, I don't know. Um, well, I guess we, we won't, we won't, we don't want to explore that until we've addressed our needs assessment issue. Um, sorry, just running through the agenda, making sure I've got all the items. Um, and I think there was just the addition of the foundational public health services, um, that resource that a, a to sort of setting a baseline of what the foundational public health services for a department ought to be. Um, I don't know if anybody looked at that or had any questions. Okay. I'm not sure what you're talking about. It's item. The, the volunteer core? No, no, sorry. It's item two on the second page of the agenda. It says foundational, okay. or sorry, II, not, not two, II on the, um, second page of the agenda and there's a hyperlink for a um, fact sheet for foundational public health services. Um, trying. It's on, on the first item that you have on the agenda. Is that correct? No, it's um, so it's on page two of the agenda. Oh, well, sorry, I got it off the web off the website. Maybe it's not page two. It's um, um, yeah, there, yeah, um, yes, there, at the top there. <laughs> Thank you. The first, yeah, that's what I thought you were talking about. Oh, okay. No, there's another page, Paula. <laughs> I'm all confused. Yeah, there's see, see, there's the. Sorry, is that Eugene? Can you roll yeah. back up so she, so I can? So this was um. So we did comments, discussion points, short-term, timeline, long-term. So then the on the next page is um, uh, I'm not, um, okay. That's, there we go. Updated, okay. Okay, all right. So that'll be useful information for us. Um, okay, I think We've, we've covered all of these items. I know there's an outstanding question about minutes to be reviewed. Um, there's a minutes list. Um, I believe Kevin had, he knew he had some outstanding. I think Eleanor was sending. I have. His, yeah, I do too. I have, I, I have one. one. Yep. Um, Laura, have I you have received? a bunch. I have a bunch that Eleanor sent me that I have not been able to get to get to yet okay um i think we do still have a few though to approve anyways are we doing are we going to approve them tonight they're not on the agenda yeah no. they're not on the agenda and, and i i want to look at the um the list because i i i now see the the, the number that we have and i want to make sure that we're getting caught up on it and um making those minutes available. And I certainly understand that the that our predecessor board and, and the staff were working like crazy. I think it looks like you guys had daily meetings for a little while. So um, I, I get that there's a, 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 a really high demand, but I, I wanna make sure that we process those minutes and get them approved and get them avail available and meet our obligations yeah. under open, open meeting. Yes. Right. There are a few that are outstanding, but I know Eleanor sent me maybe a couple more, so two or three more that I have to update okay. and put on the right template and everything. Okay. And now my printer will work. Okay. We have met 56 times since this started. Oh my God. It's extraordinary. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's extraordinary. Um. Okay, so for our next meeting, so there's no command meeting um, on Monday. And as I said, I'm, I'm, so our next meeting would be this coming uh, a week from tonight. And I will draft an agenda and share that so that that can be posted 
but I want to ask members if there are any items they want to make sure get put on. Um, and you don't have to tell me now. You can send Laura an email, and she can um, forward that to me. Um, just to be clear, and 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 because we're not going to have the Monday me Monday. Uh, all of us in attendance at command, I will have COVID as a standing item on our agendas so that we can talk about issues related. Um, okay. Okay. So, well, so Laura, we'll follow up with you next week. Hopefully you may, maybe you'll have heard from somebody and, um, or maybe not, but we'll follow up with you. Um, I will report back on my action items. Um, Rick, I know you said you're going to check in with Laura. Thank you again for yeah, some point about that um, process for plan review. And um, so, uh, can I ask? I do have something to ask. Um, yeah. a, th a third board member. Thank you. I just got a message from um, Bob. Um, that the select board has scheduled a meeting for this Tuesday to talk about this. Um, so the Board of Health vacancy is on there as an agenda item. Um, I think made mention to you about the applying to be a, to go from associate to a full member. I guess that would be part of a discussion if you were interested and chose to do that. Um, I did, I did, um, forward a request. I didn't know who to forward it to, but Jean has it and, okay. um, and, uh, the town clerk and Great. I think Laura, Laura, Jemmy was going to refer it to someone named Caitlin, who I don't know who that is. Um, and so presumably the select board has that information. Okay. That's so great. That in? That's a good question. Um, so Richard, were you willing to uh, step up to a full member now that you've um, <laughs> right? Now that I've been here, yes. <laughs> Is this it's... being recorded? Yes. <laughs> yes um, okay, that's wonderful. Thank you. thank you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um, thank you. And, yes, and... indeed. Yeah, we're delight. I'm delighted. Yeah, it's a can't speak for Paul. I'm delighted. Yeah. I love, love the voice of experience. <laughs> yep, exactly. And the commitment during the summer. Um, and Carrie, right. I, I did talk to the town manager briefly about the upcoming select board meeting. And he said that you all were going to switch then to a bi-monthly Thursday evening meeting. Is that correct? Did I understand that? That's the plan. Yes. That it would okay. be um, every other or, well, every, every other um Thursday, sorry, I'm stammering. And then I think we'll want to avoid the holidays later in the month, but yes, so it would be every other Thursday evening and we would rotate or I volunteered to be the standing participant in command meetings um, because those that you, they may move that time, but um, that's something that I can accommodate, so. Well, thank you. Um, we did have, um, the vast committee did have a nice number of applicants and and we scared most of them off with their schedule so um, <laughs> you know i i know there's some I heard other that going on <laughs> i just want to confirm that it's it's um it's a more moderate schedule now so that's wonderful thank you thank you all so much i really yes. appreciate this <laughs> and carrie let please let me know if there's something i can do to help in the interim thank until, you until till we're in, in full complement. Until we <laughs> complement, yeah. So, so I guess I'll I I've been asked to attend the Tuesday meeting with the select board. I'll I'll speak to to them <clears throat> what, what questions they have. I think I don't I don't know what their agenda is, but I think they were hoping to have a they they came back from a summer recess, which is greatly appreciated. So, get us moving forward too. Um. Okay, so unless there are other items, any comment from Laura or Jean, I'm happy to entertain a motion to adjourn. I second that emotion. <laughs> I, I second the motion. So you, 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 sorry, I need- I'm dating myself. 
<laughs> make the motion. <laughs> you need to make the motion. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I move that we adjourn. Second. Roll call. Carrie, yes. All a yes. Absolute. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks.